Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Imagine looking back into the distant past and discovering the future. In 1901, over 120 years ago, off the coast of Greece, near Antikythera Island, divers were looking for sponges 150 feet under the Mediterranean and discovered something very unexpected. In the debris of a 2,000-year-old shipwreck, among a treasure trove of ancient pottery, glassware, gold coins, jewelry, marble, and bronze statues, was the world's first known computer. The 82 fragments of what came to be known as the Antikythera mechanism stumped archaeologists and scientists upon first examination. They didn't know what to think of the gears, dials, and intricate menus inscribed in ancient Egyptian text. It appeared to be an advanced mechanical system, like a watch, but more complicated, and its purpose wasn't yet clear. Experts thought that the strange machine was too advanced in terms of design and engineering, and it didn't fit with the rest of the treasure in the wrecked cargo ship. The ship itself, they determined, was on a voyage from Rhodes to Rome for what was believed to be a big party being set up for Julius Caesar. There was a huge amount of treasure in the sunken hull, but this mysterious machine appeared to be the most important item, the crown jewel. The Antikythera mechanism is generally considered the first known analog computer, built in the early first century BC out of bronze and wood, with a few tin and lead components. With at least 30 bronze gears in a wooden container that was only about the size of a shoebox, the clockwork mechanism was highly advanced for its time. By turning a hand crank, the user could move forward or backward in time. The crank made the gears move and rotated a series of dials and rings inscribed with Greek zodiac signs and Egyptian calendar days. In 1901, the machine came out of the Mediterranean as a single corrosion-encrusted piece. Soon after discovery, it fractured into three segments. Years later, in 1976, a few other parts for the device were actually found at the same shipwreck site in another expedition by under-the-sea legend Jacques Cousteau. He was fascinated by the Antikythera mechanism and just had to investigate for himself. It's crazy that 75 years later, his team was still able to find undiscovered gears and critical parts to the system sitting right there on the ocean floor. It took a lot of x-ray imaging to see underneath two millennia of corrosion and countless hours of cleaning, grinding, polishing, and rebuilding to really begin to develop an idea for how the Antikythera mechanism actually worked. On the front face of the machine, there is a dial representing the 12 zodiac signs, marked off in 30 degree sectors. Outside that dial, there is another ring, which is rotatable, marked off with the months and days of the Egyptian calendar. The mechanism was operated by turning a small hand crank, which is now lost, unfortunately. This was linked via a crown gear to the largest gear. This moved the date pointer on the front dial, which would be set to the correct Egyptian calendar day. The action of turning the hand crank would also cause the entire system of interlock gears within the mechanism to rotate, resulting in the simultaneous calculation of the positions of the sun and moon, and the moon's phases. The system could even predict an upcoming eclipse. While the machine performed mechanical calculations, trains of interlocking gear wheels drove at least seven hands at various speeds. Instead of hours and minutes, the hands displayed celestial time. One hand for the sun, one hand for the moon, and one for each of the five planets known at the time. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. A rotating black and silver ball showed the phase of the moon. Inscriptions explained which stars rose and set on any particular date. There were also two dial systems on the back of the case, each with a pin that followed its own spiral groove, like the needle on a record player. One of these dials was a calendar, the other showed the timing of lunar and solar eclipses. The mechanism has a wooden casing with a front and back door, both containing inscriptions. The back door appears to be the instruction manual. However, there is no serial number or manufacturer listed anywhere on the Antikythera mechanism. In the 1980s, 
Noted physicist Richard Feynman visited the National Museum in Athens. He wrote that the Antikythera mechanism was so entirely different and strange that it seemed nearly impossible. The mechanism is remarkable for the level of miniaturization and the complexity of its parts. It is comparable to that of 14th century astronomical clocks, devices created more than a thousand years later. The Antikythera instrument is believed to have been designed and constructed by Greek scientists, but no one is really certain. Devices with similar complexity did not appear again until the development of mechanical astronomical clocks in Europe in the 1300s. Even though no one is sure who designed and built this machine, one man is often the focus of speculation. Hipparchus was a well-known ancient astronomer, born in what is now Turkey around 200 BC. He was one of the first thinkers to speculate that the Earth revolved around the Sun instead of the other way around, but he could never prove it. Hipparchus also created the first trigonometric tables in an attempt to solve problems related to the movement of heavenly bodies. For this reason, he's known as the father of trigonometry. Because of this and some of his other ingenious discoveries, the Antikythera mechanism is often attributed to him. One of the strangest parts of this story is that the Antikythera mechanism seems to stand alone. It's the only one known of its kind but it couldn't have been the only device. There had to be previous generations and potentially more advanced versions somehow lost. The machine is technology, but it's also art. It's a window into how the Greeks saw their universe. They came to believe that nature worked according to exact, predefined rules, much like a machine. This idea forms the basis of our current modern scientific view. All known fragments of the Antikythera mechanism are now kept at the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. The Greeks called the planets wanderers. I like that term for them. I guess planets, people, and other life forms are doing something similar in the universe. And to outside observers, it might look like wandering. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.